In this video, you're going to learn about data frames. First, let's make a heading. A data frame is very similar to a list. Both a list and a data frame look a lot like matrices, for example, whenever you print them out to your console. To your screen. A data frame, just like a list, can have columns of different modes. So you can have one column that has a bunch of words in it, you can have another column that has a bunch of numbers in it, and that's okay. What makes a data frame unique and different from the other data types that we have talked about is that a data frame must come along with names for the columns. And data frames have other functions built into them and other kinds of behaviors and code that help you do interesting things with data frames versus other kinds of data types. You'll work a lot with data frames. The more you work with R, the more you do statistics as you proceed through these videos. As an example, to make everything I just talked about a little clearer, let's start by making a matrix, a very simple matrix, similar to ones we've worked with before. Our data for this matrix will be the numbers 1 through 20. It'll have four rows and five columns. So we'll run that code and then run this, and we can see that we just created this, this matrix. As you can see, the names here for the columns and for the rows are very simply the index numbers. For example, this is the first row. The one represents row number one, and the comma shows you that this is the row, and the comma before this one shows you that we're now this refers to the column so that this is column one, this is row one, and this is the element at both of those places. But what if you don't want to just work with indexes? What if you want to work with the names? Like if you're working with an Excel spreadsheet, for example, you might give your columns names to make them more easy to keep track of. Each name or for a column might represent a variable that you're working with in your data. This might be your participant ID number, identification number. These numbers might be a particular test score, for example, an English speaking proficiency test. Coming back to data frames, we really want to work with columns and rows that have names to make them easier to work with. And one easy way to create this matrix so that the columns have names instead of just index numbers is to make a data frame out of it. And this is an easy thing to do. Let's create a variable called, let's do mate, matrix, MAT stands for matrix, MAT underscore as data frame. And we're going to assign this as data frame. This is a function that turns something into a data frame and we're gonna give it matrix 1 which we created here. So we're giving this function this matrix as an argument. And when we run this code we get a new data frame and now let's take a look at this data frame. And I run that code now, we can see inside the data frame that the numbers are the same as they are here, but this data frame does look a little bit different. You can see, for one, that the rows have become just numbers, and they don't have the brackets around them, and the column names have become v1, v2, v3, v4, v5, instead of these numbers. What 
R has done behind the scenes is automatically assign these columns and rows to these names. To show you how that works, let's look at col names, column names of matrix 1. When I run this code, it gives me null, meaning there are no column names for matrix 1. What if I do column names for matrix as data frame and I run this code? Now you can see the column names are v1, v2, v3, v4, v5. Where before we didn't have column names, now we do. Something interesting you can do now in order to access your data, in order to get your data out of the data frame, is you can use the same bracket syntax, the same bracket code as you did before to get maybe a column or a row or a or one specific number out. Now instead of just using those numbers, those indexes, with our data frame, now we can use the name of the column, for example, here. And when I run that code, I get 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4 comes from this. 1, 2, 3, 4. If I change this to 3, 9, 10, 11, 12. Here we go, 9, 10, 11, 12. So here V3 is the column and we're getting back the values that are in the vector that is V3 inside the bigger data frame.